Well, first of all, I, I want to have you talk to the audience a bit about SeaTac uh, because it's just such a marvelous institution and uh, definitely worth a visit, everybody. Yeah, so the, the work we're doing with migratory fish is part of our, our uh, policy side. We're involved in other efforts uh, to restore and protect horseshoe crabs and, and uh, the American chestnut tree and other efforts. But a lot of what we do is uh, on the education side. So we're, we're engaged in efforts to try to connect people to the natural world and, uh, and, and especially kids. We're trying to grow future conservationists. And that starts with some basic experiences in nature. So uh, we're involved in operating a couple of nature centers. We run the Suffolk County Environmental Center where we're based in Islip. Uh, the South Shore Nature Center through a partnership with the town of Islip in East Islip. And we run an outdoor education program at the Sherwood Jane Farm in East Setauket through a partnership with SPLEA, the Society for the Preservation of Long Island Antiquities. And uh, we're doing uh, as many, you know, any and everything we can do to get people and, and children outside uh, at uh, different you know, school groups, uh, scout groups. Uh, we run uh, a drop-off preschool program, the first of its kind in Suffolk County where the kids are basically outside all the time, unless it's dangerous out, they're outdoors. Um, and then lots of, uh, we, we do a lot of work with teachers too, workshops, we're involved with this Green Tree Teachers Ecology Workshop, and uh, you know, instead of focusing on parents and, and caregivers to, to get the kids outside, this idea that they're with their teachers a lot of the time, and uh, trying to get the teachers more comfortable in uh, getting children outside, and, and instead of connecting them to uh, the rainforest or, or, the, or the Antarctic ecosystems, getting the teachers comfortable talking about Long Island's ecology and connecting kids uh, to the places that they see outside their own uh, homes. So, um, uh, so yeah, so that, uh, our, our main office at the Suffolk County Environmental Center is at the spectacular Scully Estate. It's a historic building, one of a kind structure. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful old building and uh, we, have a, we have an Earth Day celebration there coming up called the Eco Carnival uh, on the 16th. Um, again, designed around a series of nature stations designed to get mm -hmm. kids. Uh, That's get their, 11 to 4. 11 to 4 to get their hands dirty and uh, have some authentic uh, nature experiences. So it's a fun event. Mm -hmm. And you're, you mentioned the uh, the preschool program, the uh, Little Peepers. Little call? Peepers, right? Mm -hmm. And is uh, registration open for that now? Always taking, uh, always trying to take uh, new kids on. Yes. Uh, let's uh, talk about uh, creeks and and dams a bit. Uh, spring is upon us. People are looking around and and, and trying to. Uh, figure out what they could do to help the local environment. There are these uh, spontaneous uh, cleanups I'm seeing in various uh, creeks uh, uh, along the South Shore. Um, which, uh, which creek do you feel really uh, needs a, a steward or a champion? Well, they yeah, all do, of I course. Mean, they, I mean, they all do. There's, you know, there's, there, there's some celebrated uh, systems on Long Island. People love the, the Peconic and the Carmens and the, and the Carls River, but uh, especially as you go west, where the streams have been so marginalized, uh, buried in many cases, uh, built over, uh, fenced off, and forgotten about. I mean, there's many streams uh, that you can barely even see, mm -hmm. let alone enjoy. And uh, in that part of the island, um, you know, you could have your pick. But um, there's some, I think, that are, are they're still substantial enough, there's still enough of a corridor Mm -hmm. uh, left that the stream have potential to, for restoration. So uh, we're involved in working with the state actually with some post Sandy funding on the Mill River okay. that flows through Oceanside and Rockville Center and um, up eventually into Hempstead Lake State Park. So it's a it's a spectacular system with lots of potential. Mm -hmm. But going uh, going east from there, um, you know, through Baldwin and Freeport and, and into Belmore and Wanta, yeah, there's a host of these streams. Um, the Meadowbrook system, for example, like the, you know, the things we did to tributaries decades ago just ma you know makes me sick sometimes. How we mm. just you know starting with the Dutch, over. really, yeah, for their mills. Right, that's right. Um, you go along Montauk Highway, every town seems to have a mill pond. It's true, everyone. I mean, that's that's the drive along Montauk Highway. You have a canal on one side and a pond on the other, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, a lot of people don't even realize that we have rivers here that there's not you know these are, these are not natural lakes I mean I've stood in a, on, a, on a backyard once and talked to a landowner about the uh, the pond in the back of his house and when I told him it was it, it was an, it wasn't natural it was an impounded river you know he looked at me like I had two heads like of course this is a, a pond it's always been a pond it's been a pond you know for a hundred years or more so mm. 
Um, but you know, these are natural tributaries. It's trying. We we need to sort of have a paradigm shift to get people to think of them as tributaries again, and mm -hmm. uh, and they need to be flowing. Uh, you mentioned Browns River in, in Bayport. Well, actually, it's uh, somewhat in, in Sable right, as well. Uh, I'm from Sable, and as you know, I would very much like to see um, some barriers taken down along there. Yep. Um, but you know, so you look at the, the mill pond. There we go again. Yep. Um, there's lots of mill ponds, and uh, there's there's uh, one which by all rights should be part of uh, Browns River so that fish could swim upstream again yeah. to spawn. Uh, but uh, people will say, well, you're going to spawn my lake view. And uh, I mean, how, how do you, res I mean, how do you respond to No, it's to tough. It's a tough one. And people are, are uh, attached to and invested in these, these views and, and uh, in some cases, uses of these impoundments. Um, but we, we're not reinventing the wheel here. There were, there were uh, nearly 100 dams removed across the country last year. Uh, the, uh, the state of Pennsylvania removed like, almost 20 dams. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's lots of people who have, who have had this reaction before mm -hmm. and have said, uh, I, I, I can't possibly live without that impoundment. But, and then after the impoundment was removed, they came around. There's a lot of great stories out there for people who will say, yes, I, I, was, I fought hard against this, but now I love this beautiful flowing stream with this beautiful... Uh, meadow alongside of it. And so one of the things I think we'll, we will need to do as we try to advance this conversation is, is to bring some of these people to Long Island and have them tell this story. I mean, there's... Uh, I mean, the picture that you had of the stream in, in Vermont, it was yeah. a spectacular, beautiful, beautiful meadow. I mean, if you're to tell people, well, you may lose the pond, but you, you're back up uh, onto a nature preserve and, and all that wildlife. Yeah. Imagine your property values after all that. Yeah, we make the case that, right, you get, you get more, in some cases you get more usable land because some people actually own underneath these ponds. So That's true their too. property, usable property actually extends. Mm -hmm. And we're making the case to municipalities that in some cases they get more parkland, more room for trails, mm -hmm. uh, better birding habitat. You know, there's lots of other benefits that come with it. Mm -hmm. And then the, you know, the piece that we tr we're trying to hit the, the leaders with is this idea of cost, that there's an economic analysis here. And I think we might try to flesh this out some more with some, with some economists, but this notion of, of the cost of maintaining dams mm. uh, as you look into the future, and I know, you know sometimes politicians don't do that long-term planning, but if you're really thinking about the cost of maintaining this dam for decades in the future and dealing with all the invasive issues and the aquatics under, you know, that are going to have to be addressed, um, it, it's a lot more expensive in most cases than taking out a dam. It's like shoveling sand against the sea with these invasives if the water's just going to sit there, flowing water, and it's right, problem solved. Problem solved. Uh, I want to give a, a shout out to a, a friend of mine, uh, Jason Atkinson, out mm. in Oregon. Sure. He succeeded, in, it's in today's paper, in having four hydroelectric dams removed from the Klamath River. 1,200 miles. Yep. I saw uh, that news. By, exec yeah. by executive order. Uh, one guy I met four years ago managed to, to uh, change that whole ecosystem. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that, that should give everybody. Uh, some encouragement. Yeah. Uh, and those to are those are dams. I mean, those are <laughs> mm -hmm. compared to what we're talking about, much mm -hmm. much more substantial structures and the cost of removing them. I mean, many of our dams on Long Island you could just about breach with a shovel. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's true. Um, a lot of them are in the process of breaching themselves because they're so old. That's true. And that's so, true. are we going to pay to keep them up, repair right. them? Right. No, well, that's the question. Hmm. Um, I'm. Just so impressed with what you, what you do. I, I can't wait to uh, fi find a dam or a stream where we could work together to, to uh, bring back the fish. Yeah, let's find one. Let's do it. We're looking for it. All right. Uh, well, that would be all the time we have on Water Matters. I want to thank our guest again, uh, Enrico Nardone of uh, the Sea Tuck yep. Environmental Association. And uh, keep up the good work, and I thank hope you. to see you again soon. Great.